now. If they're scouting for every charm, you have no idea. Hey, all my Transformer factions. Thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Transformers Trivia. We've got a very special G1 episode for you guys here today, and we're joined by our special guests, Rachel and Chris. Rachel and Chris, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, before we get started, I'd love to just uh, you guys introduce yourself, say something about your uh, where, where you're from, maybe, and um, what got you into Transformers. Uh, Rachel, we can start with you. All right. Um, I'm Rachel, so... I am actually studying applied digital arts at Kutztown University in Pennsylvania. I, my home state's Pennsylvania. Nice. Um, what got me into Transformers? So it's really a long story, but <laughs> needless to say, I started watching it when I was a kid. I wasn't fully into it, but I would draw like Mecha and robots. And then Transformers Prime and Transformers Animated really dragged me in. And since then I've watched it forever. <laughs> Nice. Great. Well, then I think you're going to have a good shot today for the G1 episode. We're going to see what happens. Uh, Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and what got you into Transformers? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Chris Malone. I recently graduated from George Mason University here in Fairfax, Virginia, with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Film and Video Studies. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. And um, what got me into Transformers is... Well, similar to Rachel, it's um, kind of a long story, but... Okay, long story short, uh, one night back in 2006, I was just perusing around a website that showcased old commercials, and I remember the exact commercial it was. It was for the Insecticons, and I don't know, for some reason, I mean, just the idea of these robots that change into different things, it just kind of stuck with me for some reason and since then i've been a big transformer nut nice you got suckered in just like the rest of us that's great <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i'm glad you guys are on the show we're gonna jump right into our 15 questions 30 seconds each and then we've got our bonus round so let's uh stick around you guys and see what happens we're gonna jump right into question number one are you guys feeling good you ready to go let's do it let's do <laughs> it ready okay question number one what date did the Transformers make their first television debut? A. May 8, 1984. B. September 17, 1984. C. August 8, 1986. Or D. May 29, 1984. 30 seconds on the clock. That is what date did the Transformers make their television debut? May 8, 1984. September 17, 1984. August 8, 1986 or D, May 29th, 1984. We love starting out can on I, a, yeah, please. Can I answer, okay. Oh, no, no, hold uh, on, just one second, Rachel. We'll wait for Chris to yes. write his and then. Of course, sorry. When you guys are good to go. Oh, okay, great. So let's well, share Well, the trip you wanted us to hold it up or not. Oh, you're welcome to hold it <laughs> not up. Not bad. Oh, yeah. two, two Bs, okay, great. And it looks like Ooh. the correct answer was B, September 17th, 1984. Congrats, that's two points on the board for Chris and Rachel. And it looks like they're starting off the round in good stride. So we're gonna move right into question number two. These guys are feeling good. Uh, go ahead, uh, for, you, uh, for all of you watching at home, if you wanna guess who you think the winner's gonna be, you can enter that in the comments and we'll see if you're correct. And also feel free to play along. Uh, if you think you know what the answer is, jot it in the comments and we'll see if you're right. So question number two, Chris and Rachel, here we go. In the episode, Divide and Conquer, what was the name for the group of three Neon Seeker jets? A, Elite Guard, B, Welcoming Committee, C, Rainmakers, or D, Power Dashers? The clock starts now. What was the name of the group of three Neon Seeker jets in episode Divide and Conquer, the Elite Guard, Welcoming Committee, Rainmakers, or Power Dashers? Uh, These guys are searching. 15 yeah. seconds on the clock. And you guys have two 50-50s in play. You can use it any time. 50-50. Uh, 50-50 for Chris. And five seconds left for Rachel. I'm going to do 50-50 also. Two 50-50s. <laughs> okay. That's all right. This gonna... one's tough. <laughs> Let's give these guys a 50-50. So in the episode Divide and Conquer, what was the name of the uh, for the group of three Neon Seeker Jets? You guys have the option of B, the Welcoming Committee, or C, Rainmakers. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, 
and they're good to go. Wonderful. So we got B and C. The correct answer was uh, C, Rainmakers. The Divide and Conquer uh, group of three neon secret jets was Rainmakers. Okay, so that's another point for Chris. And Rachel's looking to steal the lead. What's it going to be for question three? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> okay, folks, we're going to move into question number three. Here we go. When season three aired on television, what was the name of the arc given at the beginning of the season? A, the five faces of darkness. B, the secret of Cybertron. C, carnage and C minor. Or D, second generation. 30 seconds on the clock. This is, what was the name of the arc? Okay, great. Actually, Chris, I might have you just wait to show them you guys until I say, just, just in case, you, you know what I mean? You don't uh, confuse Rachel. But... Uh, Rachel, let me know when you're ready to. 15 Could seconds on the clock. Me? Yeah, it's the Five Faces of Darkness, the Secret of Cybertron, Carnage, and C Minor, or Second Generation. This is the arc given at the beginning of Season 3. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, go ahead and show your answers, guys. We got two A's. And for those of you at home, too, let's see if they were right. The correct answer for the arc given at the beginning of the season was A, the Five Faces of Darkness. Two correct answers there. Chris and Rachel. So it's three to one and we're gonna move into question number four. How are you guys feeling? Are you sweating yet? <laughs> I've been. You're doing, okay. <laughs> okay. Question number four. How many episodes were there in the original G1 cartoon? A, 95, B, 103, C, 89, or D, 98? How many episodes were there in the original G1 cartoon? 95, 103, 89, or 98? Okay, they're thinking, they're thinking. There is 15 seconds on the clock. And remember, if you're at home, feel free to jot your answers in the comments. Let's see if you guys know your knowledge back home. 10 seconds left on the clock. Rachel's looking to steal the victory. Looks like they're both ready. We're gonna stop the clock there. Okay, go ahead, guys. Let's show your answer. I don't remember the letter, but... <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, Rachel had A, and um, Chris had A. Oops, the sorry. correct answer was D, 98. Oh. Oh. 98 episodes <laughs> in the original G1 cartoon. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All good. You guys are doing great. You've already got, you've got quite a few points here for the beginning of the round. <laughs> So we're gonna jump into question number five. We're two thirds of the way there. And here we go, you guys. Who was the first Transformer we see in episode one? A, Soundwave. B, Wheeljack. C, Megatron. Or D, Bumblebee. Hold to show your answers, guys, until both of you are done. So that's, who was the first Transformer we see in episode one? Soundwave, Wheeljack, Megatron, or Bumblebee? Okay, you guys ready? Okay. Go ahead and show your answers. This is question number five. Let's see what they got. Two for B, and the correct answer is B, Wheeljack. Wheeljack was the first Transformer to appear in episode one. All right, you guys, you're killing it. So four points for Chris. We've got three points for Rachel. And guys, for everyone watching at home, if you want to be a part of the show, you'd like to be a contestant, there's an application link in the About section. So check that out below, and we'd love to have you on the show. There's all sorts of episodes from the comics, uh, series, toys. We're going to do a Megan Fox episode coming up, so we're excited to see where that goes. <laughs> um, okay. All right, Chris and Rachel, we're moving into question number six. What studio was behind the highly stylized anime-like episode Call of the Primitives? A, Tokyo Movie uh, Shinsha, Ashi Productions, C, uh, Toei, actually I hope I pronounced that right, T-O-E-I, or D, Studio O-X. Clock starts now. What studio was behind the highly stylized anime-like episode Call of the Primitives? Tokyo Movie Shinsha, Ashi Productions, Toei, or Studio OX? We've got 15 seconds on the clock. It looks like Chris is ready to go. Is Rachel good to go? She's thinking. I yeah. hope so. <laughs> All right, we'll stop it there. We'll see how they do. All right, guys, go ahead and show your answer. 
A and D. Okay, this was what studio was behind the highly stylized anime-like episode Call of the Primitives? The correct answer was C, Toei. And yeah. you guys... I knew it looked familiar, or sounded, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> oh, good. If you guys... Uh, I sh and I should have known because, from what I understand, Toei actually was responsible for the majority of the animation in the series up until the middle of season three, oh. when it was taken over by Acom. Oh, great. Okay. Well, see, you know your stuff. If, this, if the question was just slightly different. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good job, guys. Um, we're going to move into question number seven. We've got Chris at four points, Rachel at three. And here we go. What was the name of one of the co-companies who produced the G1 cartoon? A, Hanna-Barbera, B, Columbia Pictures, C, Harmony Gold, or D, Marvel Productions? Clock starts now. What was the name of one of the co-companies who produced the G1 cartoon? It looks like these guys have a pretty good guess at who this is going to be. Are you guys ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll stop the clock there. Let's see what they got. D and D, and that is correct. Marvel Productions was one of the co-companies who helped produce the G1 cartoon. Good job. Okay, five points for Chris, and Rachel's at four points. It's a tight game. We're excited to see what happens. I'll take a quick moment here to plug our sponsor for today. There's a link below this video for Sierra Candles. Sierra makes some beautiful, beautiful homemade candles that she puts scents and herbs and spices and and makes a signature card for you guys built with intention. So if you guys are looking for a gift for your significant other, uh, feel free to order one of those candles below. Check them out. They're really cool. <laughs> You never know, you never know, right? Okay, we are on question number eight. You guys are really doing a good job. I'm excited to see what happens. So here we go, question number eight. Uh -huh. The G1 cartoon ran for four seasons. How many episodes were in the fourth season? A, 12, B, three, C, 16, or D, 24? The clock starts now. Looks like Rachel had that one in the books. Chris, two, we're gonna stop it. Go ahead, you guys can show us the answer. What'd we get? B, and that is correct. There were three episodes in the fourth season. Nice. That was no sweat off your guys' back. You were ready to go. <laughs> okay. Keeping the tight lead here. Uh, we are going to move into question number nine. Just a few questions left. And then we have our wager round. And don't forget that our contestants, the winner of today, will walk home with a special little prize. So we'll see what that's gonna be. Uh, you guys can guess in the comments who you think the winner's gonna be, Rachel or Chris. Okay, question number nine, here we go. When the Transformers visited New York in the episode City of Steel, what did Bumblebee's bumper sticker say? A, I heart New York, B, NYC, C, NY, or D, I heart New York. And the difference between A and D is I heart NY or I heart New York spelled out. Clock starts now. Mm. So when the Transformers visited New York in the episode City of Steel, what did Bumblebee's uh, bumper sticker say? I heart NY, NYC, NY, or I heart New York? 15 seconds on the clock. This one is a good little tricky one. And it looks like they're both ready. We're gonna stop the clock there. And go ahead, you guys, let's see what you got. A and A. Well, if there's one thing I learned when you guys are guessing the same answer, it seems like it's right most of the time. So you guys both got it right. <laughs> I heart and Y. Mm. Good job, guys. Talk about what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are doing great. Okay, so we've got, uh, what do we got? Uh, seven points for Chris, six for Rachel. And we're moving into question number 10. If you guys love what you're seeing here today, go ahead and subscribe to the channel below and sh uh, smash that like button if you'd like. I hope you guys are having fun and remember you can guess your answers as well as in the, in the comments. Okay, question number 10. In the first episode of the show, what was the name of the yellow crane truck transformer? What was the name of the yellow crane truck transformer? A, grapple, B, hook, C, high tower, or D, hauler? Clock starts now. Grapple, hook, high tower, or hauler. This is the yellow crane truck transformer in episode one. And it looks like these guys are ready. We'll stop the clock. Go ahead and show your answers. Awesome, two A's. Okay, the correct answer was actually D, hauler. 
Caller was the yellow crane truck transformer. Oh. It sounded huh. familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't put it. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Okay. All right. Good job. They're hanging in. They're hanging in. Okay. Question number 11. Let's see what happens. What was the name of the episode that Skyfire made his first appearance in? A, Fire on the Mountain. Uh, B, The Ultimate Doom. C, Fire in the Sky. Or D, Day of the Machines. This was the episode that Skyfire made his first appearance. Fire in the Mountain, The Ultimate Doom, Fire in the Sky, or Day of the Machines. Looks like Chris is ready. Rachel's just wrapping up her answer, 15 seconds. And let's see what it is, you guys. Let's see how you did. C and C. Little suspenseful pause. They're correct. Fire in the sky. Fire in the sky. Awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> I hope you guys are having fun. You're doing a great job. Okay, so we've got Chris at eight points, Rachel at seven, and we've got four questions left. We're going to move into question number 12. Although Soundwave's traditional color is blue, what was his alternative color in the U.S. Marvel comics? A, white, B, black, uh, C, gray, or D, purple. The clock starts now. Soundwave's traditional color is blue, but what was his alternative color in the U.S. Marvel comics? White, black, gray, or purple? 20 seconds on the clock. The tension's high, and it looks like they've got their answer. All right, you guys, let's see what it is. And another correct mutual guess. It is D, purple. D, purple is correct. In my mind, I was starting to think of the shattered glass version. I'm like, no, he's not white and green. Calm down. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, and I know the and I know the black variant is technically named Sound Blaster. Okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> so you guys had some good clues there. Nice. Well, you got it right, and you guys are pushing ahead. Nine points. Chris is just about to cross it over over to ten points. Rachel's with uh, eight points, and we're into question thirteen. Uh -huh. In the Return of Optimus Prime arc, what was the name of the Red Plague that spread throughout the galaxy? A, Madness Plague, B, Hate Plague, C, Fear Plague, or D, Harm Plague. The clock starts now. In Return of Optimus Prime Arc, what was the name of the Red Plague? Madness Plague, Hate Plague, Fear Plague, or Harm Plague? We've got 20 seconds on the clock. Oh, these guys are, they don't need 30 seconds. They're ready to go. Okay, go ahead, you guys. Let's see what you got. B and A. And this was in uh, The Return of Optimus Prime. What was the name of the Red Plague? The correct answer is B, Hate Plague. Hate Plague is the correct Dang. answer. So we'll give a, a point to Chris. And uh, Rachel, no sweat. The wager round is coming up. There's still time to take the lead. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good job, guys. Uh, we got two questions left. And we're going to oh, start the clock over. Okay, here we go. Question number 14. In the episode, The Golden Lagoon, what was the name of the golden liquid? A, Electrum. B, Thorium. C, Polonium. Or D, Erbium. Clock starts now. This is the golden liquid in the episode, The Golden Lagoon. Electrum, Thorium, Polonium, or Erbium. Erbium. Mm. Oh boy, I wish I hadn't used my 50-50 so soon. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. <laughs> We've um, got 10 seconds on the clock. Uh, um, Five, four, they're good to go. Okay, all right, you guys. Let's see what you got for this one. This is the episode of the Golden Gloom. What was the name of the golden liquid? The correct answer is A, Electrum. Electrum oh, is the right. correct liquid. Oh, <laughs> I should have realized there would be kind of <laughs> All good, all good. Okay, we've got Chris at 11 points. We've got Rachel at 8 points. And we're moving into our final 15th question. Uh, let's see what happens. And then we're going to be moving into our bonus question wager round where these guys have a chance for the big comeback. And don't forget to subscribe below if you guys are loving it. If you really want to be on the show, go to that About section and apply to be a contestant. We'd love to have you. Okay, the big 15, guys. Here we go. What is the name of the race car that Mirage transforms into in the G1 cartoon? 
Now this is a personal question, so you guys better get it right. <laughs> Even though it's <laughs> in the gym. Okay. Okay. What is the name of the race car in the that Mirage transformed into in the G1 cartoon? A Williams FW07 F1. B Lotus 81 F1. C the Liger JS11 F1. Or D Ensign Ensign N180 N, uh, F1. So this is the car that Mirage uh, transforms into in the G1 cartoon. Williams FW07 F1, Lotus 81 F1, Liger JS11 F1, or the Ensign N180 F1. And it looks like Chris has got his answer. Rachel's writing down her answer. We'll stop the clock there. And the big question 15, let's see what you guys did. Mirage's car that he transforms into, we had B and C. The correct answer is C, the Liger JS11 F1. Okay, good job. Okay, go over here. And believe it or not, uh, Liger is actually Mirage's Japanese name. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, good. Good job, you guys. Great, great job on your facts and your G1 trivia. I'd love to know how you guys are doing at home. Are you guys getting the questions right? Uh, we're gonna move into the bonus round. This is the wager question. So Chris and Rachel, very important question for you. How many points do you want to wager? We have Chris at uh, 12 points and we have Rachel at eight points. And uh, Rachel, we'll start with you. How many points do you want to wager? I'll go eight. Eight Might points. As well. <laughs> the big eight, okay. Go big or go home. <laughs> and Chris, how many are you thinking about wagering? Um, I don't want to go too big. So let's say, how about 10? <laughs> okay, good, good. I thought for a minute you were going to say two or three, and then 10 was, that was great. That was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Chris is wagering 10 of his 12 points. Rachel's wagering all eight of her eight points. And we're moving into the bonus round. This is a written in question. They have 30 seconds to answer it. The tension is high, and I know I'm sweating. So let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. There have been many companions that appear alongside the Transformers to help their cause throughout the show. Who was the one that Sea Spray fell in love with? Clock starts now, 30 seconds. Um, who was the um, companion Transformer who fell in love with Sea Spray? This is in the G1 cartoon. For those of you at home, write down in the comments what you think the bonus answer is gonna be. 15 seconds on the clock. And it looks like Rachel's writing her answer. Chris might be ready. We've got five seconds on the clock. And three, two, one, they're ready to go. Okay, this is the big bonus question and we're gonna jump into it. So this is, there have been many companions that appear alongside the Transformers to help their cause throughout the show. Who was the one that Sea Spray fell in love with? Okay, you guys, let's see your answers. Let's see what you wrote. Okay, we've got uh, uh, Breaker and Alana. Are you ready for everyone at home too? The correct answer for the bonus round is Alana. Alana is the correct answer for the bonus round. So just point-wise, that brings us up to uh, 24 points for Chris, eight points for Rachel. Chris is walking away with the high command victory today on Transformers Trivia. But that is uh, all good. We love you both. You guys did a great job. I'm so happy you're on the show. Uh, Chris, you're going to get a $25 gift card to Target. Um, you can buy yourself whatever you'd like, a new Transformers toy or maybe uh, a toothbrush. I don't know, whatever you want. <laughs> you get to choose. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining. I hope you had a good time. Tell your friends to come be on the show if they want. And uh, yeah, I just hope you had fun. Okay. And uh, Rachel, Hi. great game. <laughs> yeah, great game, honestly. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> And, and Sean? Yes. Thank, thank you for having me. Of course, of course. I'm so glad you guys were on it. So real quick, for those of you about, at, at home, subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Uh, go apply to be a contestant in the About section, and we'll be back next week with another new episode. But thank you guys again, Rachel, Chris. Have a good one, and we'll see you guys next time. Transformers, roll out. Roll out. Nice. Don't have a Turn into robots. It's worthless to me now. If they're scouting for Evergeon, you have no idea.